Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Josh Dragon here, and today I am back at last to bring you an LP of one of my favorite video games from the 1980s. We're going to be playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the arcade. Uh, this game actually came out in the very late 80s, I believe 1989, yep, and was released by Konami. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones uh, to play growing up. I remember going to, like, you know, the bowling alley, um, probably different arcades and stuff, they would have this game. And uh, if you guys were growing up back in the 80s and the 90s, probably even during the 2000s, you definitely uh, remember the Ninja Turtles and were probably a huge fan of them at some point as well. I certainly was. And uh, this game uh, is actually only one year older than me, so it gives you an idea about how old I am, but um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience with the Turtles in this video. And my experience with them goes all the way back to before I was even in preschool, actually. I remember going over to a friend's house when I was probably about three years old, and he had a whole bunch of the Ninja Turtle toys. He had like the van, I think he had the Technodrome, um, and they had a whole bunch of accessories and stuff. If you guys were around at the time or you've seen pictures or videos of those things, and you know what I mean. You know, they had so many different types of toys. And uh, that really got me into it quite a lot. Because all my friends seemed to have these toys and they were really, co really cool looking. And uh, little did I know, the turtles had been around for a kind of a long time. And um, were actually, I would say they were kind of fading a, a little bit in popularity around that time. And there was a new TV show, which you guys probably remember, called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, that had either just come out or, you know, had recently come out. And that show just took off like you would not believe it. I mean, it, it, it was so popular. All the kids uh, loved the show. Um, I was never a huge fan of Power Rangers, but I did watch it uh, growing up a little bit. I liked the Turtles way better, but uh, all, the, all my friends were really into Power Rangers, so I was kind of... One of those situations where, um, you know, they were like, well, you got to get out of the turtles because Power Rangers is a new thing. So I'm going to interrupt my story here for a minute because we were at the first boss of the game, which is Rocksteady. And for a first boss, he's actually pretty difficult. He has a variety of different moves that he can use against you. And he's pretty aggressive, so he's going to uh, kind of follow you around a lot. The room that you're fighting him in is kind of smaller a little bit, which makes it tougher. And what I would recommend doing for him is you want to hit him a couple times and move away quickly. There is a more advanced strategy you can use if you have Leo, Mike, or Don because they have the uh, Slash special ability which Raph doesn't have. Um, so I don't really know how to fight him as effectively with Raph, but I would just probably recommend doing that. Hit him a few times and move away. Once he starts blinking like this, he's almost dead. So there we go, he's down and out. And uh, uh oh, there's Shredder, he's taking April away. Come back! I had to put that in there from the movie, that quote, so good. Anyway, back to the main story, um, I would go out for Halloween as, you know, one of the turtles, usually Raph, because he was my favorite, but uh, sometimes Leo and sometimes Mike, you know, it would just kind of depend a little bit. And uh, actually, when I was about probably four or five, I started to get into martial arts, and a large contributing factor to that was the Ninja Turtles, and also was probably, uh, you know, to be honest, Tommy Oliver from uh, Power Rangers as well, and uh, the Red Ranger, I also quite liked the Red Ranger, uh, the original one, so that got me interested in, in doing martial arts, and um, for me, I loved karate, it was one of my favorite uh, childhood memories, I was just going to do, uh, you know, karate a few times a week, and um, it's really cool when you have something like this that gets you into it at such an early age. So this level is pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward. You've now got these yellow boomerang throwing foot soldiers and man there are a ton of them over here. Uh, the one thing that I will recommend for them is to try to get in close to where they're at and you can beat them up pretty fast. Not that likely to, you know, they don't seem to punch you as fast as some of the other ones do. Um, but if you get 
you know, further away from them, they're really nasty to deal with because they can hit you with that boomerang. So just try to take them down quickly, I guess, is what I'm trying to say here. That was really unfortunate. I just got uh, locked into the screen there, basically, the side of the screen, and I couldn't get the pizza when I needed it. So, unfortunately, I lost a life there. I have not played this game in quite a while as well. So, I think this was actually the first... Oh, I love that. Duh, who put the lights out? They always say something different in these games, and every one of them they say something a little bit different. And yeah, you have to hit that woman on the skateboard. <laughs> it's like a... It's just a must-do in this game. You know, it's so it's so tempting. I don't think I've ever played through this game like a single time, and, and I didn't, you know, choose to hit the woman on the skateboard. You gotta do it. If you're playing the game, you gotta do it. You're compelled, man. 100%. Uh, we're almost through with stage two. We're coming up on Bebop pretty quickly. We've got a couple more foot soldiers to deal with here. And um, you, again, you want to make sure you're moving through these levels uh, at a pretty reasonable clip. So Bebop's going to come down here. And he's probably one of the easiest bosses I would say in the game because when you go to fight him, um, he's gonna normally be a little slow to throw his punches, and also his long distance weapon shoots kind of slowly and he telegraphs it a little bit. So he's pretty easy to um, navigate around for the most part. You want to just hit him, you know, a couple times. If you, like with Rocksteady, if you hit him multiple times, um, he's gonna wind up doing a lot of damage to you. So <laughs> wound up getting hit by this guy a few times, I admit that. This is not a good fight against him. I really shouldn't be getting hit by him at all, but uh, I don't think it was maybe paying enough attention. I got hit by him again there, geez. So now I gotta be careful that I don't die against him. There we go. But anyway, like most of the bosses, you wanna only hit him a couple times and then move on. So we're now coming up on Act 3, and this is when the game first starts to really get hard. If you haven't taken a death by this point, uh, which of course I'm not good enough uh, right now to, to even be in that kind of a realm, but if you haven't, you're going to really notice that the game is extremely difficult. They're going to throw all kinds of foot soldiers at you. The AI of the enemies is really going to go up, and the game it becomes extremely difficult at this point. Uh, of course, I'm nowhere near good enough right now to, you know, even get to level 3 without taking a death, but I have done it a few times in the past. It's quite hard. And this is going to be our first encounter here uh, in a minute with the Mousers. I'll wait till we get there to talk about them. Oh, there's the Mousers, there we go. So they're a pretty simple enemy. Um, they're fairly easy to take out, but if you let them move around a little bit, they can be kind of a pain, and they do take off a fair amount of health. So you want to get them, kind of ambush them as quickly as possible. Once they're on the ground, they become pretty dangerous actually, so try to take them out as quickly as you can. I've got a few more of them here, just gonna move up and take them out. And uh, now the thing is, is, once you go down here, you're gonna find these missiles that are firing at you uh, from the water. If it wasn't bad enough that we have this, you know, cage that's going down on us, trying to crush us, and all these foot soldiers, we have to have missiles in the water as well. And if you're playing the NES version, you can actually destroy these missiles for points which you'll want to collect in the um, in the NES game because they give you an extra life every, I think, 200 uh, points that you get. In the arcade game, it doesn't really matter that much. Points are just for high score, and um, unless you're going for a high score, they don't matter. But uh, I'm not trying for a high score in this particular playthrough. Um, so we're gonna bring in Don at this point, just because I want to move, you know, switch up the turtles a little bit, and uh, give someone else a chance. We've been using Raph here for a while, and here's our third boss, which is Baxter Stockman. Baxter Stockman was featured heavily in the cartoon show 
Um, I do remember seeing him a couple of times on there. And uh, the monsters are his invention. He's a very, very easy boss fight in the uh, NES game at least. Um, he's actually pretty easy here too, but I would say that maybe he's a little tougher than Beepop, I'm not quite sure. Uh, for those of you, of course, who are too young to have seen the uh, kid show, the Ninja Turtles show, the original one, it was on back in the uh, late 1980s and into the mid 90s. Uh, I think it spanned for about eight or nine years. It was really popular. A lot of people to this day even remember it. And um, uh, it was something that I, I saw kind of at the tail end of its run. I saw the last maybe year or two of it. And I uh, was so disappointed when they canceled that show. Because I'd love to, uh, to watch it. But um, I know they've made a whole lot of other ones since then. I've never seen any of them. I kind of fell into that group that was in between the original show and was maybe just a little too old for the second 2003 version. Didn't interest me at the time when that one was on. So this is a really interesting level because there's going to be these cars in the background that will periodically come out at you and you want to be careful because it's only certain cars that are actually going to move out to hit you. The first one that we're going to encounter here is this blue one. So you want to kind of sneak out, and if you do it right, it'll take out all those foot soldiers, and then you're going to get ambushed by the machine gun foot soldiers who are a real pain um, in this game, much more so than in the NES port. So you want to make sure that you take them out fast, and uh, we're going to use Don again here. Take out all these foot soldiers. Of course, this is extremely difficult if you get here without any deaths. <laughs> I don't even want to think about that right now. This is uh, an interesting part that we're coming up to here. This is going to be a rematch with both Bebop and Rocksteady, which they changed for the uh, NES game, of course, because they probably couldn't you know, do this given the limitations of the time period. But this is a very difficult fight. Probably one of the hardest ones in the game. And the reason it's difficult is just that you're fighting them both at the same time. Um, I very rarely am able to beat both of these guys without taking a death. I'm sure I probably won't be able to do it here. But the best trick is to take out one of them. I usually find that I take out Bebop first. Uh, he just seems to be the easier of the two, and uh, the problem I'm having right now is that I'm not able to hit him, so he's got more of his life than Rocksteady, and that's a real bad thing for me. I'm sure I won't, yeah, sure I wasn't going to make it through that part, but put in another credit, and we'll keep going. Rocksteady's probably going to go down first, I would say, at this point. I think we'll go after him. I don't want to lose another life to these guys, jeez ridiculous. If I could just take down Rocksteady, I'm sure I could beat Bebop. Oh man, I still have to knock him down again. This is going to be tough. Yep. Yeah, I couldn't do it, unfortunately, on that one. Kind of a bad run for me on these guys. But this is not an easy fight. And, oh, jeez, it got me again. Come on, this, he still won't go down, it's ridiculous. I don't, not another life, oh my god. I just lost three lives to these guys. This is ridiculous, finally he goes down. And now Bebop's flashing, alright, so now this will be easy now, because there's no rock steady to, you know, back him up, so to speak. Yeah, it's really easy once one of them goes down. I didn't do that right. I should have taken out Bebop first, but um, in this particular case, don't watch this video for how to fight those guys. That's not how you want to do it. And we got the uh, kiss from April, and we're now moving on to scene three, which is really more like level five, I think. But uh, in either case, moving on to the highway level. Highway level is pretty tough. I would say I think it's the longest stretch of um, 
fighting in the game in terms of the foot soldiers and stuff like that. It's pretty long. It feels long. Uh, and it feels especially long in the NES game. But uh, I, the biggest danger here is really the spear guys. There's a lot of them. And uh, this is the first time we're going to deal with the bomb throwing ninja foot soldier guys. We got a bunch of these roadkill Rodneys because we have two turtles on the screen, so they're going to give us a few more, why not? And, um, not really that big of a deal, but, uh, they can be a dangerous enemy, it just kind of depends on the circumstances. Probably going to wind up losing one of the turtles here, I might not bring Mike back. And, uh, for the next one. And actually, I think we've been through now most of the foot soldiers that we're going to see in this game. Been through a lot of them, at least. The bike foot soldiers. I don't know if you can kick them off their bikes or not. You can in the uh, NES game. In fact, there's a very cool trick you can do to get as many lives as you want in the, um, in the NES game. Which I did uh, an LP on that back in 2014 or 2015. You can check that out if you want to learn that trick. I would recommend checking out that video. Um, I brought Mike back because he hasn't really, I don't know, he hasn't beaten that many foot soldiers. I wanted to bring him back, you know, he's he's got to do better than that before I <laughs> bring in someone else. I still haven't brought in Leo yet, and Leo is actually my favorite uh, of the turtles, at least today, so I'll probably be doing that soon. But yeah, you can tell right there, I mean, the foot soldiers with the spears are really a nasty enemy. Very tough. And not handling that guy super well, but got him off the screen. Still, wow, he's still going. There we go. Got rid of that white foot soldier. Three more of these guys with a hammer. Never a fun enemy in this game. Um... I think if there's one criticism I would probably make for this game, it's that I don't like the move set as well on this game as I do on the NES, and um, I, I don't know, I feel like that kind of adds a level of challenge here because I don't feel like I can really comfortably attack the enemy sometimes. I mean, in certain cases, like with that, it works great, but... There's other points where I don't feel like uh, I, I really make solid contact with the kicks and stuff, and you're kind of in a vulnerable position afterward because the enemies aren't, um, you know, they're not stun locked uh, well enough that you're able to recover from the the move that you did. Because in many cases, when you're playing this game, you're going to have to hit an enemy multiple times. I think the only two enemies in the game that go down with one hit are the um, the mousers and then an enemy that we're going to encounter in the next level here, the, the little blue helicopter guys. Most enemies require multiple hits, at least three or four hits, so it's hard to, you know, even find a point where you can use these jump kicks. And a trick you can do in this level, which is pretty cool, which I did not do correctly here again, is you can actually uh, not kill off all those foot soldiers and you can simply run to the end of the level and uh, you won't have to fight these guys who are dropping the bombs. These are very hard enemies by the way, probably the toughest enemy in the game I would say. I guess I'm going to have to eat my words on that one because I'm going to have to fight another one. So, luckily I took him out quickly. And we should be coming up on the end of the level here. Don't do it the way I'm doing it here. You want to make sure that you don't kill all those enemies off. It's kind of funny. I'm doing an LP and I'm like, don't copy me. I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> but, I don't know. It's been a long time maybe since I played the game or I got impatient. I'm not sure which. Anyway, we just drove off of the highway, and that doesn't look too good. The monsters are taking away Splinter, and you know, Michelangelo, why didn't you just go take out those monsters? You could have gotten them. You could have taken them out. You were right there. 
Anyway, we're going to bring in Leo here. This is the last time that we're going to see the monsters in this game coming up here. And I'll just take them out quick. There's only like four or five. There's actually an enemy that they had in the... Um... Oh, that feels so good to take out those foot soldiers with the spears like that. God, it feels good to not have to fight those guys. I only have one of them now. But there was an enemy in this level that they did not include in this game. It was included in the NES port. And that was this dome-shaped enemy that was actually a real pain to fight. Um, that would shoot out the... Uh, would shoot these bullets that looked a lot like the ray gun that Bebop uses. And uh, they were a pain to fight. I'm so glad we don't have to fight them here because I never enjoyed fighting them at all. And um, of course they you know, gave us plenty of other challenges, but there are some interesting differences between the uh, arcade game and the NES version. And uh, we're going to be fighting the blue helicopter guys here. I think, actually, I said earlier that they take one hit. They might take two hits. I might be wrong on that. I guess it is one here. I think in the NES it's two hits. I, I could be wrong, though. Uh, the first time I ever got this far in the game, I thought this was a boss, believe it or not, because it was a module, and I didn't know what was going on. So when the stage kept going, I was really shocked. I was like, oh my, oh my gosh, we're not done with this yet. Wow. And... Um, I think that the changes are good that they made uh, for the NES. I actually think that the uh, Turtles in Time, um, which is probably my favorite of the uh, Turtles games for the Super Nintendo, I really like that one. But I did not care as much for the uh, arcade version that they made. So this is Lieutenant Granitor, and Granitor is probably the toughest boss in the game next to maybe shredder at the very end he's super tough because he basically has this thing in his uh, AI that allows him to kind of override moves that you're doing where he uh, can hit you when you're moving away or um, when you're about to hit him he'll hit you instead most bosses in this game if you go to hit him um, they'll let the computer will let you hit them rather than them hitting you he seems to be the other way though where he'll get a uh, priority over you and he's hitting me quite a lot here I'm not fighting him well uh, I really should just walk him up and down which is the preferred way to fight Granitor he's actually pretty easy in the NES game because you can kinda use the jump kick strategy against him and that works super well against Granitor Granitor is much much tougher here and um, you want to kind of keep in close proximity, but always make sure that you're moving up so you're never on the same horizontal plane. Uh, if you are, you're going to be in a lot of trouble against this guy. He's really strong, takes a ridiculous amount of hits, uh, has priority over you in terms of his attacks, and he's taken off at least two lives. I think three lives now. I haven't been counting, but quite a few here. I said it earlier and I'm going to say it again, do not fight him the way I'm fighting him here. <laughs> I'm going to have to do another LP of this game, why not? <laughs> it's my favorite one anyway and um, I could probably do a much better job, I know I can do a much better job of fighting him, so maybe I'll do that, I'll do this game again and show you guys the correct way to actually fight some of these bosses, but um, the first time I got to him in the NES game, he destroyed me. I mean, it took a lot of practice to beat Granitor. He's very tough, takes a lot of patience, uh, and you got to be pretty consistent when you're fighting him. It doesn't really matter too much here because this is a name. You just put a, another credit in, you're good to go, so to speak. And finally took that guy down. See, he just takes so many hits. Going inside the Technodrome. We gotta find the Technodrome. I think we just found it. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Alright, we gotta bring in all the turtles. We're gonna do something special here. 
We're going to get everyone involved. Haven't done that yet, but uh, we're moving on to the last full level in the game. We got to get everyone involved for this. We got Leo, Mike, Don, Raph. Everyone's out, and we are going to be facing so many enemies. Jeez. Look at this. They just throw everything at you. So look at all the roadkill Rod Rod Rodneys. <laughs> I'm so excited I can't even talk right. There's like five of them on the screen right now, and all these stupid spear guys. And the lag is, you know, of course, because of the amount of enemies on the screen is just crazy. Um, but I'm just doing this for fun, but to actually try to do this in an actual arcade, I can't imagine that. It, you wouldn't go anywhere. You would just throw away quarters like this. But uh, it looks cool. It really does. But uh, you wouldn't get very far. Can you look? Imagine that. The machine comes up, it freezes two or three turtles, and you know that's half of your life. So, this is a well, maybe not half your life, but it's a significant amount of your life that it would take off. This is a pretty difficult level. Um, you got to be pretty careful here. We've got some of the balls. This will be our. Uh, second and final appearance of these rolling black balls. They're very easy to navigate around. Um, we should have some pizzas down here. And we're going to have a ton of foot soldiers on this part. Oh yeah! The machine gun, foot soldiers, and more roadkill Rodneys because five wasn't enough. We gotta throw in another five. And uh, luckily they threw in some pizzas which we're going to definitely need because this is chaos basically <laughs> just enemies everywhere all over the place um, I don't know if they ever made a toy out of the roadkill Rodneys that's a that'd be an interesting thing I don't think that they did for some reason and you know what else they never made a toy I don't think out of um, Granitor which I never understood why because um, I, I thought he was one of the more popular villains, but may, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Um, I don't really remember ever seeing him on the show, but uh, it does kind of surprise me that they didn't do that. Alright, so this is General Trag, and uh, he is the third to last boss in the game. Surprisingly, he's actually easier than Lieutenant Granitor, because he doesn't have that priority override to, to hit you. So he's actually kind of simple in that sense, which is nice. Um, Granitor takes a, a lot of hits, but Trag takes even more. And um, you don't want to fight him like me. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. I'm, I'm doing this part for fun. Really, when you're fighting someone like this, you want to walk them up and down the screen. Hit them once, move away. Hit them again, move away. Uh, do not fight them on the same horizontal plane. If you do, you're going to die really quick. Or you can do it like this if you have tons of credits and tons of the uh, turtles and you'll just, you know, waste them real quickly that way. Um, just doing this again for fun, but that's not what you want to do when you're actually playing this game. So he's almost down and out. There we go. And we're going to move on now to Krang. Alright, so we're now taking on Krang, and uh, I'm going to give you a little uh, secret about him. If you're fighting him with Don, there's a really easy way to beat him, where you can actually hit him in the kneecaps once he gets close to you and you move away, and he won't do anything but just walk after you. You just turn around, hit him again, walk away, turn around, hit him again, walk away. In the arcade game, this works. I don't know, I don't believe you can do this in the uh, NES but uh, you can in the arcade, and he actually will never hit you. He's just extremely easy with Don. I don't think the other turtles have the same reach, so it doesn't work with them, but with Don it will work. So, he becomes a ridiculously easy fight. Um, just a little uh, mistake I guess they made with the, with the AI and the programming, but uh, a very easy boss. If he's fought properly, this is not fighting him correctly at all. Uh, although I've got a little tag team thing going on here with Leo and, and uh, Don. <laughs> but. 
Krang was featured very heavily in the TV show. Um, it, pretty much anybody that saw the show would remember Krang. He was a very popular villain, and I uh, had a crazy, weird way of talking that was uh, kind of interesting. Um, I don't think he's really appeared in anything else. Maybe in one of the movies he was in, I don't remember that. He was never in the live action stuff. And he wasn't in the original video game, which I thought was kind of disappointing, but um, one thing I will say on that is the original Turtles for the NES, the one from 1989, was actually uh, not fully based off of the cartoon. It was based in part on the cartoon and in part on the comics, so I can't really fault them for not including Krang in there because Krang was never a part of the original comic series, so... Um, you know, it's, that's not really a fair criticism, I don't think, to make of that game. So, having this many turtles, we're going to be fighting a ridiculous amount of the Shredder clones. Of course, this is never how you would actually fight <laughs> in the game, where you would take four deaths like that, throw away a dollar, essentially, or more. But, we're going to do it here just because it's fun, and um, the reason also I'm fighting shredder the way that I'm fighting him with all four turtles is because uh, I have them the controls for player 2, player 3, and player 4 linked together so they're all gonna move in the same direction because um, and at the same time attack at the same time because they're programmed to, uh, to move that way so once you knock off the helmet from shredder he uh, actually loses the ability to kill you with that beam. If, if the beam touches you, it's a one-hit death. And we're fighting the last Shredder here, so that means he's actually low on health because he doesn't have enough energy to create more clones, so his helmet should come off soon. And he just got me there with a ridiculous death, so I guess we're just going to finish him off, why not, uh, with all four turtles. I guess I was wrong when I said that he does have enough energy because he just cloned himself a bunch of times. But, um... Once he gets low on health, his helmet will come off. He won't be able to kill you with that one-hit kill move. And it's a pretty easy fight from there. Unless you're doing this kind of thing, which is crazy, you know. You don't want to be fighting him this way, seriously. I think we found the real one here because he's not losing that helmet. And uh, usually if you hit him a bunch of times and the helmet stays on, that's the one you want to fight. Um, again, don't fight him like me. I'm not doing this the right way. Down to the real one again. Leo versus Shredder. Let's find out who's going to win here. It's not looking good for me at the moment. Jeez. There we go. The helmet came off. Alright, let's finish him off. No more lives lost. Let's take this guy down. He's not that hard at this point anyway. Right, there we go. Leo took him out. Turtles save the day I guess and now we gotta get get the hell out of the technodrome because it's about to blow up and there we go we have beaten Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the arcade game epilogue freak the foots mangled the mousers and total the technodrome that's turtle power but what about the shredder and Krang burned to toast vaporized to milkshake or escape to Dimension X. Until we know, none of us can sleep safely in our beds, or shells. And there we have it. Pretty satisfying end of the game, uh, at least for me. I do think this is a better ending than the one we got for the NES. That one is kind of bland, I think. It doesn't look that great, but... Um, for a game like this, I mean, I'm happy with this ending. Definitely one that I really enjoyed. Um, brings back all kinds of memories for me. I can still remember the first time that I played this. I think I was about well, probably eight years old or something like that. I found it in a bowling alley, and uh, I had never knew that they made a, an arcade version of this. But... Um, yeah, really, really fun game. Definitely holds up well. Still a lot of fun. I think in the next part, we'll be playing the other 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game, which is Turtles in Time. And uh, we can talk about some of the differences between the two games. And I'll be looking forward to that one because Turtles in Time is also a really fun um, arcade gaming experience. But right now we're going to go ahead and put my initials in here. Which is JD. And we're going to use an exclamation point, I think. Something fun for that last initial. Alright guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. And um, thanks again. I look forward to bringing you more of these in the future. This is Josh Dragon, signing out.